Greetings. Uh, today's video is going to be a little different than the norm. Uh, I'm going to test an opinion of mine, um, and it will be an objective test, but uh, those of you who have watched any of my videos know I don't advocate just changing all the electrolytic capacitors in an old amplifier. Instead, I suggest uh, that only the components that are failing or, or not functioning properly be replaced and the rest of them be retained. Uh, I've got a means today to test that theory. Uh, the subject of the test is going to be this 1955 Gretsch Electromatic uh, Tweed Amplifier. This is the uh, Electromatic Artist model from 1955. It originally cost $110 and um, we're going to look at this circuit. Uh, it has, it's electro, has an electrodynamic speaker and there's going to be three 10 microfarad at 450 uh, volt uh, electrolytic capacitors that we're going to check. Now what makes this the appropriate subject for this study is that uh, when I went through the circuit of this amp, I did not change any of the capacitors. So this is a completely original amp with the original electrolytic capacitors from 1955. I think that's a fairly acid test of whether or not old capacitors can measure up. Okay, let's take a quick look at the uh, Gretsch Electromatic uh, amplifier that we'll be using for this investigation. Uh, as you can see it has the original grill cloth in real nice shape, original tweed uh, with the typical corner wear, uh, a heavy old original leather handle that's sort of delaminating on the side here. It makes me a little nervous but this handle I think you could probably lift a Oldsmobile with it so I still don't trust old vintage handles. When I'm carrying the amp I might have one hand on this but always one hand underneath the amp just in case something comes loose and it could be even um, these brackets on the side. Okay, uh, this is the rear of the amp, obviously. Uh, we've got the three inputs here, uh, two at high impedance, one at low impedance, which will result in a much higher gain. Single volume control for all three inputs. Tone control here, the traditional fuse and on-off switch. Really a nice, uh, original, shiny, I use car wax on the control panels, and you can see this is a beauty. I uh, got the original lower back door with the really neat little Gretsch Electromatic logo on it. I can see the original electrodynamic speaker in there with the 550-3 identification that we see on almost all these Valco amps. Uh, let's pull the back door and uh, take a look inside. Okay, here we got the back off. Uh, one thing I've noticed that's kind of interesting with the resurgence of interest in vintage amps that Gretsch is reissuing uh, a kind of an imitation of this specific amplifier now that uh, you can buy at uh, the Guitar Center. Okay, it's always nice, of course, to have the original. Now, here's the three-quarter inch pine cabinet with the knots that we see in almost all pine cabinets. Here's where the original little envelope with the spare fuse uh, was attached. Apparently uh, it was either torn out by accident or by necessity. Uh, we've got the uh, first, uh, the preamp tube is a 6SQ7. We go to a 6SC7. Uh, one part of it is for amplification. One part of it is for phase inversion. We've got the 6V6 over here. Uh, we've got a pair of them, actually. There's one lurking in the background. So we've got our two 6V6s for push-pull, and we've got our uh, 5Y3 rectifier. The really nice old electrodynamic speaker, and I use that term, and I don't know, maybe there's some people that don't know that in the old days, speakers didn't come with permanent magnets. They came with an electromagnet on the back, and it served two purposes. Number one, when electrified, it provided the magnet magnetic field to drive the voice coil. And secondly, it was used as a um, filter choke in the uh, first stages uh, of the power supply. So uh, we've got a really nice filter choke and electromagnet here. Uh, this is the 
output transformer that, as was in the case in the old days, was attached actually to the speaker basket itself. I noticed that the plug has been changed, but it's to a polarized plug so that it can only go in the right way into the socket where the black wire, the hot wire, is run through the fuse and switch up here in the chassis. So, to be honest, this is, I think, as good an idea as using the three wire plugs. Okay, um, this has already been changed, so I'm going to leave it alone. We're going to look down here at the schematic and see that the speaker field coil uh, is 1000 ohms. The speaker itself, although it doesn't say so, is an 8 ohm speaker. Okay, let's pull the chassis and check out the electrolytic capacitors. Okay, here's the underside of the chassis. Uh, now that I see this, it reminds me, when I bought this, it didn't work at all uh, and had a, just a really bad smell when you plugged it in and turned it on. I flipped, pulled this out, and looked, this was a solid, and I mean solid, rat's nest. Okay, and what really complicated things is the rat used a bunch of tin foil to make the nest, which caused all sorts of short circuits in here. Uh, that's probably a little bit of rat urine uh, ate away at the metal. But anyway, this was a nasty beast when I first got it. Uh, I cleaned it all out, blew it out, you know, about had to rake it out. It was terrible. Everything looks original to me. These two capacitors. Uh, are not of the style of the rest, so these are sprigs. They may have been changed at some time in its life. But other than that, every wire, every bit about of this is completely original. Okay, uh, here is the capacitor we're going to focus on. It's an old CAN capacitor, 10, 10, 10 at 450. Okay, and we're going to do our work right here on uh, these three terminals. Here's the device I'll be using today. It's a blue ESR meter. ESR means equivalent series resistance and it measures uh, a sort of a quality of electrolytic capacitors that is not measured by any other uh, means. Okay, and it will really give you an idea if the capacitors are leaky or not. Um, this is made by Anatech Corporation in New Hampshire uh, I got this on eBay. Uh, they cost around $99 and I think you can get free shipping. I got mine already assembled. Uh, you can buy them in kits for $77 or $79 I guess. And to be honest, for the $20 difference and the fact that if anything went wrong with this, they can't blame it on me, I thought made the, the extra $20 worth the money. Uh, normally, uh, what I've been using is the old trusty capacitor measuring, you know, uh, your old volt ohm meter, and then I would switch over to resistance and see if any of the electrolytics had measurable resistance, which they shouldn't, okay, so if I got a capacitance value that was within a range, say like on a 10 uh, microfarad capacitor, if it was like 12, 11, something like that, that's great. If it's 30, it makes it a little suspicious. Then I'd switch over, and if there's no measurable resistance, um, no matter how tiny it may be, this meter, of course, is very limited in the small resistances that it can detect. I would assume it was a good capacitor. As we'll see, that's very superficial. This meter can measure exceedingly small resistances very, very accurately, and uh, we'll see how the old um, capacitors in this Gretsch amp measure up. Okay, first step, anytime you go into an amplifier chassis, especially if you're about to hook up your brand new $100 ESR meter to a capacitor, is I take a 100 ohm um, high wattage, in uh, this case a 10 watt uh, resistor, I connect one end of it to a good ground, and then I'll go in and touch each of the capacitor terminals for like 5 or 10 seconds to be sure that they are thoroughly drained of their charge. Okay, this should be done anytime you open any chassis anywhere. Uh, I don't care what your plans are, you better drain those filter capacitors. I've seen filter capacitors that would actually save up a pretty healthy charge for a day or two. Okay, so you just don't know and it's a, a really bad lesson to learn the hard way. Okay, so now we've done that, let's move on to our next step. 
Okay, now using my capacitor uh, measuring meter, I'm going to check the capacitance of the three uh, terminals. Okay, let's go over and take a look. Uh, first one's at 12.88 microfarads, 24.81, that looks a little suspicious. 25.5. So it looks like we have one that's in a uh, good range and the other two are over double what we would expect. Uh, so we're starting to get a little suspicious about these capacitors. Next I'm going to see if they have measurable resistance. Uh, no on uh, the first one, no on the second one, no on the third one. Okay, so they passed that test, which is a crude test, but it's what I've been doing up until now. Now, one of the great advantages of the ESR meter is it uses just absolutely minimal voltage, and at a, it's applied at a very high frequency. I like, I don't know, it's either 10 or 100,000 cycles per second. So it does not activate the circuit, and you can actually measure the components while they're uh, in position, in circuit. You don't have to unsolder them. Also, there is no polarity uh, concern, so we can hook this up uh, to an electrolytic uh, with either one of these on the positive and either one on the negative. Since my background is primarily in medical science and research, uh, I don't tend to accept what people tell me are acceptable values on things. Uh, so I did my own independent study, and I got uh, the, the 8, uh, 10 microfarad at 450 brand new capacitors that I had on hand and I measured uh, them with the ESR meter and as you can see the readings come out fairly close um, so from this I'm gonna say I'll give it uh, the uh, old filter capacitors a little leeway but I'm thinking if I'm gonna trust them they should be reading at below 3 ohms uh, and if so I think they're probably usable and if they're far above it that's the other beauty of the ESR meter. When the capacitors are bad, it isn't like they're going to measure 2.1. They're going to measure uh, like 8 or 10. And usually when they're bad, they're real bad. So let's go take a look at what the old filter capacitors measure with the ESR meter. Using the meter is extremely simple. Uh, you can hook the two probes together. You push this button once, and you'll get the reading of your resistance within the wires and probes. Push it again and it zeroes. Okay, then we're going to separate our probes and use them on the capacitors. Okay, the bottom terminal 2.0. It, it functions as well as the brand new capacitors. The next terminal 2.1. The third terminal it's hard to do this with one hand 2.1. So, look at this to me is very interesting. Uh, because using the capacitance meter, these two upper terminals would appear to be very suspicious because they were like two and a half times the capacitance you would expect. Okay, but when measured with the ultimate device to uh, determine the functionality of capacitors, uh, these measure very closely to brand new capacitors. Uh, this really makes me feel good. I had not done this before. Uh, this isn't rigged, okay? I had no idea what I would find here. Uh, I accepted these capacitors mainly because when I operated the amplifier it functioned beautifully. No hum, great tone, and I figure, well, they must be working. Well, this test uh, when they finally come up with a device like this that can do an actual measurement on capacitors, this test confirms what I've been suspecting all along. I think you would be crazy to pull out this original can from 1955 and replace it with three brand new Chinese capacitors that don't work any better than the ones you had. Okay, so... Um, now, I don't mean to get up on a soapbox here, and I realize that the results from so limited a test are not entirely conclusive, but I think it really does give us something to think about uh, and supports the conservative approach to preserving originality, and, and th by that I mean keeping the functional components within your amp, which includes the electrolytic capacitors when they are fully functional, 
and only eliminating the parts that need to be replaced. Okay, I hope you found all this interesting, uh, as I did, and uh, that you'll stay tuned for future videos. Um, you might even consider subscribing uh, to my site, if you would. Regardless, I appreciate your time and interest, and I uh, hope to see you again in the near future. Until then, good luck.